a bill in Washington is, um, I guess, being passed, Bill 5599. It's an act relating to supporting youth. This is, that doesn't sound like a United States act. Is that a certain state? Yeah, uh, for uh, Washington specifically. Washington State. Yeah, Washington State. Basically, uh, a, a child can run to a host home and uh, they don't need to notify the parent where they're going. Like a neighbor? <laughs> <laughs> like State Farm. Shout out to State Farm, yeah. Jake. Well, these host homes will gladly take these runaways in. Oh, so they're like signed up for a program and they're just called host homes. Yeah, something like that. And uh, the host home does not now with this bill. The host home does not have to tell the parents where the kid is. The kids don't have to tell their parents where they are. They can live in this host home and they will be affirmed in all of their cares that they need, including... Uh, health care and gender affirming care. Governor Inslee voicing support for a new bill intended to protect trans youth. Senate Bill 5599 passed the Senate, House, and is on its way to the governor's desk. The law would allow shelters to not contact a young person's parents if that young person is after, quote, protected health care services. That includes gender affirming treatment. The law already outlaws abuse and you could call CPS and we certainly want to protect children. But we think this bill goes too far in taking loving parents away from important, significant decisions that teens are making. The bill is intended to lower the barrier of entry to shelters for trans youth. Critics argue it leaves parents in the dark. That is in the bill that if a teen runs away and a loving parent is trying to find where their teen is at, the state will not tell them. And as a parent, that's terrifying. The governor says he's still awaiting a full briefing on the legislation, but in the meantime, is voicing support. Let me try to uh, re-articulate that so I know I'm understanding what you're saying. If children are not agreeing with something their parents wants to propagate, mm -hmm. they can run away. Mm -hmm. And then they probably can go online somewhere and find this organization of host families and run away to one of these host homes. Mm -hmm. It's like a safe zone. And this host family can take them in and basically become a legal guardian for these runaways. And they can offer these runaways whatever they whatever assistance they want even if it's something as much as a gender affirming mm -hmm. surgery or such because maybe their parents don't approve of that and since they need a parent consent they'll just do a runaway action so they can do this through a host family yeah and they don't need to tell the biological parents where the kid is the kid doesn't need to. There's no requirement to let the parent know at all what anything that's going on, according to this bill. Does this host family now just take on the full responsibility of this kid for the rest of the kid's life? Probably not. I'm sure the kid will eventually go back to the, the real how, home. What if the kid just doesn't want to? Then they stay in Neverland. I was just interested in the bill because it's like if you're going to give the host family that much authority, you should also make them accept the responsibility of the child. Well, I like how the merchant guy and the wolf said it on Pinocchio. They were talking, and everybody knows this scene from Pinocchio. If you don't know it, then go check it out. It's a scene where the guy, the uh, I guess he's portrayed as a bad guy in the show. I'm not inclined to say that, but he's, he's talking to the wolf guy, and he's like, how would you like to make some real money? And the wolf is like, real money? Who do we have to kill? And the the other guy's like, no, 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 you don't have to do anything like that. What I need you to do is basically go take all the uh, boys that are bad, bring them to me, um, and we'll take them to Pleasure Island. And then the wolf's like, Pleasure Island? And then the other guy's like, yeah, they go in a boy, but they don't leave as boys. They leave as grown men. Pleasure uh, Island? But the law, suppose they... No, no. There's no risk. They never come back as boys. It seems like one of those, like he was, that's probably the idea of a host home. Like any rebellious or naughty boys, that's who they were targeting. 
specifically boys too. I don't know why they weren't inclusive to other genders, but boys alone apparently were allowed in Pleasure Island. But in Washington, Pleasure Island or host homes are inclusive. Well, I'm sure the law isn't going to be descriptive about what you're alluding to, but <laughs> I can see why somebody could assume that correlation between pokey pokey pokemon's pokey o <laughs> pokey o at uh, pleasure Pinocchio. pokesters Pinocchio. yeah and i can see how that could be eluded but i'm sure the law is not going to be that descriptive because uh yeah that's just an immediate lawsuit law i am the law yeah but it is interesting because if they don't hold responsibility for the child I don't know how they have legal authority to be as a guardian to speak on behalf of the child. But yeah, I guess if the law passes that, but it's almost like you come here, you get to utilize, it's almost like a surrogate. You get to come here, you get to use our services, but you have to go back to your parent after you get the gender affirming surgery. Well, I guess um, in their defense, they were saying uh, that an, uh, one compelling reason to not notify the parents about their kids staying in a host home is that circumstances that include that indicate notifying the parent or legal guardian will suspect the minor or subject the minor to abuse or neglect. So they're trying to protect the child from parental abuse and neglect. So that's why they don't want to notify. It's kind of like if a woman, you know, they have those, uh, I can't remember what they call them, not alpha shelters, but women shelters for women who have been abused. They're not supposed to tell the husband or the abuser where they're at. Yeah, but don't they, I mean, that seems counterintuitive and in, in default. Like, so you do this because you don't want them to get abused. So you think they're not going to get abused. And using that logic, if you reframe their knowledge because of the fear of abuse, once they gain knowledge, then the context is they're going to get abused. So after they get the surgery, they're going to have the knowledge. So that would infer that now they're going to get abused. So it's like you're not telling them so they don't get abused, but now you're going to bring them back to their original parents' house with this knowledge. I don't think they will, but even if they did, now they're going to get abused. It's out of their hands like a soccer game. They're going to get abused. Like a, like a football was, game. <laughs> the whole point was we're not letting them know so they don't get abused. Look, if – it's kind of like Dahmer. If Dahmer would have notified the parents of these people who were going to his host home. He couldn't have abrogated them. Yeah, so the, the parents would have brought the children back to the abusive situations that they were living in. Think the gods that Dahmer did not notify the parents. I don't know how else. That's the best I could put it. If he would have told the parents where he, the, the where their kids were, think of the abuse they would have undergone. I, I just see so many weird scenarios like this. All because these are these this idea sets precedent for things. This assumes that this state of Washington is eluding the fact that children. Uh, is there an age on this cap too? Because it just this, says youth, so maybe twelve and up. I yeah, because I was like, this will lose the fact that they have comprehension of their well being. They have enough knowledge to make the best decisions for their life. That they are, because it, it's other weird stuff. If they can make these kind of strong decisions, what's the point of a parent? Oh, well, actually, this includes prepubescent minors as well, uh, because um, they could in these host homes they could start giving. Uh, cross-sex hormones and surgeries to minors even uh, including puberty blockers there's other services that were unclear as well that would be affirmed under other services yeah it just says unclear which services would be approved <laughs> services <the> <laughs> yeah i mean you go you want you want a it's fancy like a, steak it's a full service center <laughs> <laughs> yeah kind of like that it's like it's not self-service it's full service. Yeah. It's like at a gas station. It's like yeah. they pump the gas for you. If you're in Portland. But in Washington, they change your gender fluid without you even having to touch it. So and that's your cool. blinker fluid. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's just, it's just weird because that sets these precedents. It's like if children can run away and then you give them the authority to do all this, you're eluding the fact that they have enough comprehension to make these life choices. And then that's, if that's the case, 
how many more things will start to trickle down the line of the illusion that the children already know what's best for them? If that's the case, then it loses the effect. What's the whole point of a parent other than just like a proxy? I'm just here to pay for your food and your house, but you know what's best for you. Back to the diaper changing woman, back to everything. It's like what's this? This th these precedents. It's what's the problem? It's one thing when you have off cases, like one or two cases of individual people fighting, but when you make a universal state proclamation, you're setting a precedent that all children have this cognitive ability. And it's like, then what's the point of a parent? 